Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Simpilot and today we are taking a look at the brand new COWS DA42 Diamond Twin Star for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This has just been released, it is available through Orbex and it is a really interesting aircraft and something I was looking forward to flying in the sim. This is a advanced modern twin engined four seater general aviation airplane, probably one of the most advanced in its category. It's also a complex aircraft which is down to the fact that we have variable pitch propellers and retractable landing gear. It features some technologies that uh, we see in modern day or even the latest generation of commercial airliners such as the composite fuselage, something we are used to now with uh, a new aircraft, the Boeing 787. Uh, and of course it's got full authority digital engine control, FADEC control for the engines which removes a lot of the hard work for us as pilots of piston powered aircraft and propeller powered aircraft as well. As a result it is actually quite a simple aircraft to fly and really very enjoyable. I am a real world airline pilot so I'll give you some extra context on what it's like to fly this aircraft. I have also flown this aircraft in the real world so I'm interested to compare it and see how this one handles and what it's like inside. We'll be taking this version, the uh, the fancy Mark 6 version or the, the Diamond D426 uh, for a flight today starting out here in Oxford. Let's get into the video, we're going to look at the exterior, the interior both of which are modelled by cows specifically, so we get a nice new visual model all round and some extra texturing and detailing, which is really uh, very nice indeed. And then we're going to look at the flight model because that is a big selling point of this aircraft. Now I'm doing a review of this. I bought this aircraft with my own money, though this was not sent over. This is a copy that I have purchased to give you uh, all, if you're thinking about this aircraft, a bit of an idea of what it's all about. Absolutely love the shape of the aircraft. Look at that fuselage. It's just a really, really interesting design. Not something, <laughs> not something you see. It's very, very distinctive. Anyway, let's get into the video. So here we are on the menu. Choosing our route, I'm going to fly from. Hello. Yes, the first officer is here to help, but we don't. We only need one pilot for this one. Yes. Okay. Well, she disagrees. Um, we're going to fly from uh, Oxford Kidlington down to <laughs> Wickham Airpark. <laughs> I'll help you. <laughs> particularly upset today um, and we're going to go via the Benson uh, mats so uh, yeah pretty straightforward route not too long as you can see about 15 minutes but it's just a chance for us to take off and take it into the air do some aerobatics and en route uh, handling stuff not aerobatics I should say maneuvers such as stalling uh, and here's our choice of aeroplane the cows DA42 there's the Mark 6 and it's not called a Mark 6 but uh, yeah number 6 or go back to selection you can see we have the uh, TDI version so the 6 is the newest version actually first flew in 2012 but uh, yeah slightly adjusted aerodynamics and engine cows you can see the intakes are slightly different and so on so yeah quite interesting uh, perfected to cruise a bit faster um, and uh, yeah be a bit more efficient I'm gonna take that today because I like the liveries uh, I think we're gonna go for a red one I think that's just a cool livery there's two different panel colors as well this is the, the darker panel color and then you've got some with the lighter sort of gray slaty color so let's take the red one and we'll load up and do a cold and dark uh, start up from oxford now cows say that this exterior model is it's got lots of fancy features things like uh let me see if i can find the phrase they used um light baked reflections <laughs> things like that so they've worked hard on the the texturing and the exterior model with some photorealistic things uh, blended into the model now that includes wear and tear and dirt and as you can see if we get right up close you, that starts to become apparent you've got these streaks of oil here all these rivets all look very nice um, and 3d which is really really good I, I do like it i think it's a very good visual model obviously as an overall silhouette it does look spot on and uh, as we uh, will see you get the different uh, intake cows for the Mark 6 and then the more traditional TDI version. So this is the newer version we have here. Um, but yeah, it's got all the little 3D bits. It's got, if you come right up close, it just looks great. You've got these uh, textures along the leading edge. I like it. I like it. The real diamond is a very, you know, they're kept very clean. This is quite a fancy aircraft. If you own one of these, you're going to keep it looking as nice as you can. I personally would like to see a little more, um, a little more wear perhaps or maybe a few more blemishes on it i know they they have got them but i just i don't know from a distance personally i just think this looks very very clean indeed but as like i say if you do actually get close you do start to get a sense of all those textures and dirt um that make it start to feel there you go if you look down here just a little bit more 
alive than uh, than the, the default aircraft which of course is one that you would be comparing this to um, as there is uh, a diamond aircraft included in Microsoft Flight Simulator so they need to have something extra and this does have it but like I said you've got to get relatively close to, to really uh, really notice it and that is partly down to the very shiny sort of composite clean fuselage that you get on the, the real aircraft as well. As we move into the landing gear area you can see around here all nice something they have added is these decals so you get these really nice stickers and these little decals I always say this I think they bring these aircraft to life you know it's like a uh, making a model airplane out of airfix or plastic uh, it's not until you put the decals on it looks it looks genuine and here we can start to see this is what i like this sort of the paint chipping off and things like that so that's very good so they they really have done a, a fantastic job and there's some stains down here under the engine um but you you might find yourself having to look a little closer to see it streaks on the, the screws here so yeah i'm happy i uh, i'm Personally, my taste is towards a very heavily worn aircraft. <laughs> Perhaps that's just my experience of how I've, I've typically flown them. Um, but yeah, a lovely machine. And this chrome on top of the engine, by the way, does stay looking uh, rather shiny and nice on the real ones. They have also, and we'll see this in the interior, uh, modeled some scratches on the perspex and things like that. So very nice indeed. Like I say, the silhouette, spot on. You can't fault it. Really, really nice. The classic diamond shape. And I would say arguably one of the prettiest airplanes in its class just so distinctive it's absolutely lovely to fly in uh, you've got nice big windows uh, and it's just yeah just so reassuring to look out and see that big engine that big wing <laughs> looks basically like a glider fantastic machine so there we go that's the exterior let's get inside and see how this airplane is to fire up there you go look at those decals do not turn the nose wheel more than 40 degrees either side of center line very nice inside the flight deck and of course uh, you know what I'm going to look for. Well, let's have a quick look at the, the model in here. So we've got these nice textured seats. You've got a stick in the middle. It is a, a I say joystick flown airplane. It is a stick flown airplane. Um, slightly worn pedals down here. So they have modeled wear and tear in the, in the cockpit, which I do like a lot. Um, so yeah, very nice. Bit of interactivity. This little window opens. The sounds do bleed in from the outside when you do that. Uh, and you can sort of do things like turn the lights on on the overhead and stuff like that, which I think is all, all very good. You can even open the canopy of course as you would hope which is down here click and there you go now you can get yourself in and out of your lovely fancy airplane i'm actually not a massive fan of this system although i think it's quite good for escape because of course it does allow um full access either side you don't have to try and clamber through to escape out of one side or the other which i think would be important because of course one of these engines could be on fire if you're trying to escape in a hurry but there we go we won't talk too, <laughs> too much about it being on fire and the next thing that I always want to see, checklists. I love the checklists. They are here. Before engine start, there's 23 items. Uh, I'm going to run through these and then we'll move on uh, and get the engine started. So pretty straightforward. Aux pumps check off and you can click on the little circle. That's right, little I. And I've got to move the camera back here because the aux pumps are... Actually, no, they're, well, they're these. So make sure they're off. A little hard to tell whether they are off or on. Um, I think they might be on <laughs> by default so off should be back so there you go that's off tick uh, fuel selectors check on guards closed so the fuel selectors actually stay on we don't need to put them to cut off so they are on and the guards are closed tick power levers idle so they're called power levers because we don't need to worry about uh, moving the throttle carburetors things like that this is a, a fuel injected engine so no car piece or anything like that and also it is a um fadec controlled engine so we can run these up and down as we wish we have no propeller control that's all done by the fadec so they're at idle parking brake is over here which is in the set position uh alternate air emergency gear check to push off so that's the emergency gear uh, is there i'm not sure where the alternate air is but anyway we haven't fiddled with it flap selector check up flaps needs to be in the up fuel pumps check off so fuel pumps are off and gear selector is down that is important there we go uh, masters check off so these are the masters there it does say four so i think it means elect master as well and the avionics master is also off so they're all off pizza heat is off on the left there alternators check on uh, so the alternators are over here they're both on it's very straightforward this airplane it's it's a nice airplane i think this is a good one for um airline pilots who haven't flown general aviation much in the sin they would enjoy this uh voters check auto they are down here auto all lights check off lights are i do know where they are they are in front of us off circuit breakers check all in you can see all these circuit breakers which you can pull so very nice modeling there uh, electric master on let's get this airplane powered up 
can see even the standby horizon start to quiver and wobble as it starts to so come to life. Brilliant. On G1000 powered, acknowledge. So this is powering on. I'm going to press Ent to continue over here. Control stick, full and free, correct travel. So I can look outside. Look at my stick, full and free, correct travel. I'm not going to be able to see the uh, tail plane in here because it's a nice T-tail. I do like T-tails. I learned to fly on a T-tail aeroplane. Variable elevator stop tests. Stick back and hold, powerful. Stick moves forward, power idle, stick moves backwards. Now that doesn't work for me, but I'm not sure how that's modeled. Um, but there we go, that could be to do with my hardware. Trim as required, direct trim neutral. So you can see here the trim runs as per normal. You've got a wheel down here, but it's typically using the uh, trim control on the stick. And there we go, let's set it to the takeoff position. Gear and fire warning test, test, this will work. Uh, just make sure we got enough sound. There we go, right engine fire, left engine fire. And the gear lights do come on there. Flats full travel, check, so run them down. And run them up. We won't need the DI system today. Fuel quantity and temperature, check. So fuel, I have to get used to this, it's shown here on the Garmin. The G1000 is not something I was uh, trained on, so it is new to me. The default Microsoft one is very good, and here I think, I'm not sure if this is a custom one or not, I think it might be the same. Um, but anyway, G1000 is fuel quantity showing us propensity. We don't barely need any fuel for what we're doing today. So that's good. Let's go on to engine start. This is really simple. Doors closed and latched. They are ACL, so strobe light on, energy collision light on. That should get us some lights. Let's see where that light shows up. There you go. We get just the white strobes on this airplane on the wingtips. Uh, they're not. It's not a sort of flashing strobe. It looks like so. That's not too bad. Power levers. Idle. Propeller area clear. So it's clear and clear front. And you would check behind as well. Tick engine master on. So let's put the engine master. Let's start the right engine on. It says right glow on because it's a diesel engine, so it's trying to warm itself up. The glow light's gone. Wait till off, and now we can just start the engine. Now, I would shout out clear prop. I'll get my uh, helper here to go clear prop. And then we're just going to start the, the key. By the way, something to check when you do general aviation is what happens next. So I need the oil pressure to go outside the red arc very quickly. So oil pressure is here. I need the right to go out of red within three seconds and then I can check everything else. So let's do that. So start, there's the engine and within three seconds, oil pressure is in the green. So that's done, done. We've got voltage and electrical load. Load, yep, opposite engine start. So master switch goes on, wait for the glow light. Just close up that little window. Glow light's gone. Clear prop. And left. Probably worth closing that window before you start it. <laughs> and oil pressure in the green. There we go. Simple. Really, really simple. Uh, I actually really quite like the start system. Love that we have the checklist here. After engine start now. Pretty straightforward. Oil pressure check. They are both sitting in the green. RPM 710 plus or minus 30. We've got 700 RPM showing here. Remember, no, no propeller levers, so we don't have to change that ourselves. Lights as required. I'm just going to put on the position lights. Uh, I'm going to set the taxi light ready to for... Actually, no, just position lights. I will put on the instrument lights, though, as ever, and a bit of the floodlight just for the video. Fuel selectors to cross-feed. So, back and back. Tick. Piezo heat test on and enunciation which goes and plus amps so that should increase I'm not sure what it means by amps on the ground still heat is derated and will show a fail indication there it is still heat fail good avionics master on now that will power up our standby stuff up here i believe uh, transponder mode code we can put in i'm not too worried about that today attempt to set let's put the q and h in 1013 today uh, standby horizon cage so let's pull list the cage and it should do a little nice little wobble oh that's very smooth i liked that <laughs> that's very nice uh good and autopilot test i'm not sure what that is 
So I'm going to say it's going to work. And then we'll set up our route. You can see our route is already loaded because I did it through the Microsoft Flight Simulator planning thing, which is always nice. Fuel selectors back to on. So we've proven the crossfeed works. They can just go on. Next is the taxi checklist. So before we go, we'll put the taxi light on. Parking brake, release, test the brakes, steer, and follow through. So let's just say. Next will be the four takeoff checklist. So we a bit of power checks to do. Good. Well, it's all clear on the left. It's all clear on the right. All right, we're going to taxi out. Where's the taxi light, by the way? I'm just out of curiosity. Yeah, it's that LED there on the left side. Very nice. So we'll taxi out to the runway. Uh, I'm going to go for the, the departure from facing north. Now let's see if I can make a... There's no way for us to turn with this <laughs> tug in the way. So we've got the taxi light on. Brakes released. Get the airplane moving and look away <laughs> as we do so much in flight sim. Just the left engine needed. Brakes work nicely. And then if we go left, side slip goes right, airplane goes to the left, and the direction indicator goes left. And same for right. Looking good. Looking very good. Um, right, let's head over. Oh, I like that they've got their, there you go, the cow logo <laughs> on the headrest. Very cool. Good stuff. I'm looking forward to this. We haven't had general aviation on the channel for a while, so this has been something I'd like to do. And like I say, good fun that it's an airplane that I have flown. Um, and we're going to hear some fantastic sounds. So I will turn those up for you uh, a little bit later once we are underway. Beautiful machine. I absolutely love it. And I love this livery. I love twin engine GA. I absolutely love it. It's the only way to do gem aviation once you've done it because you just it's so addictive having that power on takeoff and then the reassurance of two engines, you know. It really really is nice. And I think it gives a lot of stability to the airplane. Twin engine aircraft like this are much more if they do feel heavy by comparison. Right, we're going to climb up initially to 2000 feet. So I'm going to set that in the uh, autopilot altitude window over here. Let's do two five. Now I'm not going to be following airspace rules or so on. Um, I'm going to be uh, simply flying this a bit like a, a general aviation airplane, like you might in the sim. Uh, you, there, of course, in the real world, there will be air traffic to contend with, and also lots and lots and lots of airspace to contend with if you're doing a route like this. <laughs> so lots of communications and so on to do. Right, I'm just going to swing us around here. Point is a little bit down the runway. The wind's essentially dead. So, parking brake. Set. And we'll run through those power checks. Something that you do have to do in general aviation. Something that we don't have to do in uh, modern airliners, thankfully. Parking brake is set. Doors check. No warning. We have no doors warning. Just a stall heat. Circuit breakers check all in. They are still all in, even with my plane. <laughs> Uh, control stick, full and free, correct travel. So you just move it all the way around. And we can see our ailerons, can't see much else. Uh, trim as required. I, th I think, I'm trying to think in the real aircraft, could you see? I don't know. I can't remember. I haven't flown it for a long time. I can't remember if you can see the tail by leaning it up against the window there to see the elevator. Uh, fuel selectors, check on. Guards closed. So these are little guards. So they're closed and they're on. Power levers are at idle, engine temperatures check green, so let me just turn off the head tracking for a second. So engine temperatures, cooling temperature, fuel temperature are all green. Rotor switches, A auto, B auto, both in auto. ECU test tests, press and hold till complete, confirm no errors. So I think that's running a test of the... Uh, RPM control. <laughs> Making lots of noise it is. Let's try the other one. So you get ECU A fail, ECU B fail. Look at this. And this is what this aircraft is promising us, you know. This extra systems depth for the, for, uh, the Diamond 42. It should have all these systems modeled and I expect it to. Um, given it's a, it's a fairly reasonable price it's not a cheap add-on this one for for a general aviation airplane so we go let's 
Now, I don't know what this, when this test will end. <laughs> I feel like it's already done it. But that is me not fully understanding an aircraft. And there we go. Done. So it does. Completes the test. Very good. I like that. Fuel pumps on. Next is line up. Lights will go on. We'll have the... So there you go. We don't have to do a power run. We just let the uh, ECU do its test. Oh, such a good airplane. Like I say, a fantastic airplane to do your first general aviation on. Peter de-ice. I'm going to have the Peter heat on. Parking brake release. Approach check clear. And then max power check. Max for 10 seconds. Check load. And then we can go. Good. We'll do that. So here's our route. We're going up to 2,500 feet. Uh, I'm going to put this into nav mode because it's no good being in lock mode. Let's see if I can work that out. Prepare to watch me struggle with the Garmin 1000. Like I say, not my cup of tea particularly. Um, it's it's amazing. It's incredibly powerful. Uh, just to get rid of those cautions. Um, but it is something that I am constantly arguing with <laughs> i found it i found it cdi down here course deviation indicator if you click on that it will swap through the different ones so we want gps uh, which has our first course there 148 which is this course here that'll take us down our, on our route uh, as we set up in microsoft flight simulator please do not check the time to see how long that took me um that would be very mean <laughs> right let's film the approach clear on the runway let's release the brakes I think it's going to be a flapless takeoff. I I seem to remember you don't need uh, the airplane to do that. And we need to be... The MC is 71 knots, so we'll get above 71 knots. So we'll try and get to sort of 80 for our rotation. It's a relatively short runway. This is a very powerful airplane. We haven't got much headwind. Okay, let's go for one stage of flap. Right, so I'm going to give those engines 10 seconds at full power. And we'll turn the sound up so you can hear it. Right, sound incoming for you. Let's go. I must remember to turn it down. So, brakes released. Awesome sounds, I absolutely love it. Full power. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10. By the way, look at how it's twitching. Can you see that? It just it wants to go. The wings are twitching. Love that. Really nice. Brakes released. A bit of right rudder needed. It's trying to uh, move with the gyro. Now that humming vibration that it does is sort of softened as we start to accelerate. So powerful, this machine. Absolutely love it. There we go. We're above the MC, so that's minimum control speed. And let's rotate the air no trouble there positive rates in fact i just wait a little bit we're not gonna allow that runway to gear up and there are vy which is our maximum rate of climb now that might not be true with the flaps out 500 feet above the ground safe speed flaps coming up Beautiful. This is such a lovely machine. I think they've done a great job. Those sounds, I hope you can hear them. You might not be able to hear me, but uh, yeah, absolutely lovely. A bit of trim required, just a little bit. Now you do your circuit departure. I'm just gonna make a nice lazy right turn out of the way. Can't remember what direction would this circuit be. It would be written in the charts for the airfield. Beautiful. D 
this is where Microsoft Flight Simulator just shines. It's just so nice. What don't we need now? Leaving the circuit. Let's turn off the land, uh, the taxi light and landing light. We'll leave position the strobe lights on as we leave the circuit. We're 600 feet now, so we are above that circuit. Again, with twin engines, no trouble. Now we have this FADEC control, which is what allows me to just to sit here at full power. You can bring it back a bit for climb power. And you can see here that the, the uh, actual percentage load is, is our indication. We're not worried about um, RPMs and so on, because like I say, the airplane does it for us. So landing it up, flaps up, fuel pumps can go off. Climb power 92%, there we go. Which is loads, rudder trim set, pitot heat as required and light as required. Excellent. Next is the cruise checklist, so we'll do that in a moment. Now you can see that it does want to yaw, so I am going to need a little bit of rudder trim as we arrive at 2,500 feet. Now these aircraft, this di the diamond, the one thing I'd say is if you're not used to general aviation and you're trying to navigate visually and you're trying to deal with um, airspace and so on, is it is fast. Uh, things happen quickly for a general aviation airplane. I know it's not as fast as a 787 or an A320, um, which is the machine I fly. <laughs> Uh, every day but I find this airplane quick because for the airspace you're in and the way you're flying it especially looking out the windows to navigate it is a speedy speedy machine and you can soon find yourself running into trouble or getting lost and the temptation is to become a bit reliant on these screens which is something we don't want to do too much you can hear that sort of whistle as we get the airspeed up I love that. Now the cruise speed of this is up in the one, it can do 170 plus knots in the cruise. So the yellow bar, I think we're allowed to go into, but I'm not 100% on that. Again, I don't have much experience flying this in the real world. We're just below the cloud basis here, which is perfect. Staying visual enough. It's reassuring that we do have a DI system if we need it. Let's try and actually stay too far. Now that takeoff and the handling of this airplane is something I can't fault. They promised good handling again it's a well priced or a, uh, a relatively high price for a general aviation add-on i say high it's not really high it's an average price it's not cheap so i say for for just two variations of, a, of an airplane especially one that you do have in the sim already and i think what they needed to deliver on was the systems depth and we saw there with things like the ecu it's there and also the handling and i'd say they have i've got to say this is one of the better handling aircraft on the ground in microsoft flight simulator we often have this discussion that the ground handling physics in Microsoft Flight Simulator are just a little bit too, it's too aggressive, too sticky. But I've always said this is partly down to developers. It's up to them to, and I don't know if this is because it's more difficult for them or um, why it's harder for them to do it in Microsoft, but sometimes it's better than others. And this is one of the ones that's better. I think it handles really nicely. The rudder control during taxi and during takeoff is, is nice. It doesn't feel glued to the ground, which I think is great. Okay, let's just get it trimmed out there, 2,500 feet, 147 knots, power's back, we're only at 70% load, pretty good, a little bit of left rudder trim, and there we go, we're following our magenta line, we are a child of the magenta, <laughs> um, always a popular thing to be. Uh, right, let's now, of course, we've done far too much flying, let's think about how we can get an autopilot to do all our work for us, because this is a modern fancy airplane, I don't want to have to do anything. So if I look in here, there is an autopilot, a yaw damper, so let me just turn on air tracking. Let's put the yaw damper on, make our life easier, get the airplane level, love this big horizon. Uh, and then I'm going to put on the flight director, it's in roll and pitch, so I'm going to put it into nav and alt mode. 2420 and then I'm going to put the autopilot in. So now it's going to maintain the altitude of 2420 it's going to maintain the GPS track. Now I don't want to be at 2420 I want to be 25 so I'm going to press VS up 300 feet per minute and you can see out air so it should level off then at the uh, 25. Out air so there we go. Right let's run the cruise checklist. Cruise power is set. Uh, what does it say it should be? It doesn't say rudder trim set so to do the rudder trim Look at this little side slip indicator. If it's out to the right, so if that little white bar here was off to the right, I'd need right rudder trim, which is down here. You can see I need a bit of right. And if it's out to the left, I'll need left. As you change power settings, you'll notice that changes, although we have the yaw damper now, which should help that. Our temperatures are set, staying on 2992-1013. And that's absolutely fine for today, but uh, yeah, obviously it shouldn't be. Fuel quantity, temp, check, balance, transfer. So even quantities, nice temperature, not much to do there. 
Heat of heat, I'm leaving on, we're going in and out of cloud, and it's not that cold, uh, hot, 10 degrees. Everyone instruments monitor. Next will be descent checklist, which means setting descent power, the rudder trim, so you have to adjust that because you've changed power, altimeters, and the gear fire warning test before we put it down. So we're ready for the approach check, basically. You can see here, we're gonna go through the uh, Benson uh, military zone, and then make a left turn towards uh, High Wycombe, our destination for today. Lovely. This is where Microsoft Flight Simulator is at its peak, I maintain. I think this is just, just beautiful. Look at that. What a treat. What a treat. So here's our turning point already there. You cover ground very quickly in this. Again, another reason this is a good first choice. If you get a bit fidgety on long flights, you can get yourself uh, on some decent routes with this. You can also use it because it goes up to 18,000 feet. It's a very powerful aeroplane. You can use it to cover some serious terrain or to go over some water because you've got two engines. So yeah, very good. By the way, a feature that I wish uh, the 787 had is you can click the heading bug when it does this. Watch this. Boom, synchronized heading bug. Love that great feature any airplane with a heading bug should have it in my opinion right let's think about uh, having a look at some of the, the stranger well not stranger but the, the handling of this airplane now they uh, cows are very proud of this they've put in uh, some careful work into the flight model using real instructions on the aircraft so let's have a look uh, and see how it behaves so first of all autopilot off you see that bit of a twitch from the yaw just press that twice so we know it's off good and let's think about shutting down an engine now this is a twin engine aeroplane so it should be able to handle this. I'm not entirely sure of the shutdown procedure, again haven't flown this aeroplane for a long time. But uh, it is relatively straightforward from what I remember. Uh, let's bring the power on one engine gradually back to idle. Now with propeller aeroplanes, shutting down the engine is a little more complicated than jet aircraft. As I bring the power back, you'll notice the aeroplane, uh, sorry the propeller is trying to continuously spin at the same RPM. That means it goes very fine compared to the airflow and causes a huge amount of drag. As it does, you can see here, you see that uh, side slip indicator has moved off to the right and the airplane's being dragged down to the left. One way to describe it is it's trying to roll over onto its back and fly into the ground. It's quite a nasty situation. Certainly, it's more nasty than a single engine airplane having an engine failure. And you can see our speed is washing off. So what we need to do is get that engine shut down and feathered. So we bring that to idle and then use the left master off. The magic of this aeroplane is that putting the master off, you can see it drive that propeller into the feather position. So now it is uh, it is not dragging in the airflow as much as it was. We need to get some power on quickly before we get below VMC. Uh, Let me just get the thrust up on that live engine. Get back down to 2,500 feet. And of course, what I should have done this whole time, and you'll see it now, is look at that. If I get that rudder Check in, gear. get that size up indicated into the middle, I'm just going to move the power lever out of the way to get rid of that gear warning. Uh, and now, you can see that I'm holding a lot of right rudder, but that is keeping that size up indicator in the middle. I love that howling noise. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Um, obviously, something to do with the way the airplane is aerodynamically side slipping or dealing with some yaw. Very nice. It's a, it's a nice effect. It makes it feel really alive. I also love the way this propeller sort of. It, it, it's getting caught by the air and every now and then just flicking over as one of those um, blades gets enough force on it to, to turn it. So I like that. Very, very realistic simulation of a, a shutdown engine there in a propeller aircraft. Absolutely brilliant. And you'll see here that even after I messed around, I didn't get the rudder in, you know, because what you should have done is got that rudder in straight away. The airplane is controllable. It's a powerful machine. We've got a powerful right engine. I'm running it at basically max power right now just to get us back up to a sensible speed. And I'm slowly, that right rudder trim is in, and I'm letting go of that right rudder myself. And I can just take a bit of power off that right engine. Get the airplane trimmed out. So we're a bit slower than we were, so a bit of nose up trim is required. sensitive process this <laughs> and there we go still wants a bit more and we're flying along one engine shut down plenty of rudder in you can see that rudder trim tab forcing that rudder over to the right 
which is what's allowing us to uh, to fly relatively straight and level. No trouble. So that all felt very nice to me. The en the airplane is a handful on one engine, but it is controllable. That's what you'd expect of an aircraft like this. Uh, they are not easy. There's a lot of pilots who um, aren't huge fans of uh, twin engine airplanes if they're not used to them because it is potentially a very sticky situation if you get it wrong. You've got to get the rudder in, you've got to keep the energy in the aeroplane. One big thing is you can't allow yourself to get too slow. If you do, that rudder loses airflow over it and then that can actually mean that it's unrecoverable, i.e. you won't have enough air to fight the asymmetric um, power. Also, multi-engine flying is a, a complex thing that takes a lot of training and is a big part of becoming a commercial airline pilot. You spend a lot of time in your training on single engine, and that's what a lot of flight schools use the Diamond DA42 Twinstar for, for that multi-engine training. But there we go. Uh, I really like it. I think that's nice, and the airplane feels sluggish, but controllable, and a bit of a handful like this. And of course, now, as I change power setting, the airplane's going to yaw all over the place because I've got loads of rudder in. Quite a handful indeed. Let's get that engine powered up again. So I'm going to follow the start procedure. So put idle there. We've got the fuel on, and simply I'm going to put the master on. Check gear. Wait for the glow. There's no glow. It's warm. And then we start. Check gear. Now gently bring that up. Get the rudder trim out. Now we've already overflown High Wickham, so let's uh, <laughs> let's get the airplane under control. Then we're going to do a bit of stalling, and then we're going to go and fly an approach and land. Now, of course, this has the Garmin 1000 system in it, so you can quite happily set up a flight plan in the airplane, put in arrivals and routes. It's all very cool. Not really what I'm here to do. Um, general aviation, I, I quite like um, the simplicity of, of loading up a route in the sim and then and then flying around like this. I'm here for the aeroplane really more than navigating, but I've got to say the views are spectacular as ever. I absolutely love flying around at these speeds, not something I do very much of in the sim, it's something I always enjoy when we get to do it on the channel. And there we go, back to where we were. Aeroplane's accelerating, got a nose down trim required. Lovely. Now I said I wanted to try uh, looking at some other parts of the handling, such as the stalling, so let's give it a go. I will put the fuel pumps on to do that mess around too much uh, with stools and so on uh, by the way just to show you uh, yeah you can go in here and you can build your flight plan you can see it's got a route in and you can put a procedure in select the approach and arrival and so on in there something else I do like the altimeter look at it wobble if I go into a climb do full power I love the way it gently sticks and, and wobbles a bit back and forwards Maybe not quite when you go that fast up, but yeah, it's a very nice standby altimeter. It's got a real, real sense of the real ones to it. I like it a lot. I've done a good job with that. Nice, nice detail. You can also have engine wear modeled on this airplane, which will take into account how you let it cool down and heat up. Uh, that's not something I'm using uh, in this video right now. So stalling, 3,000 feet, power back. I am going to trim initially. You can see there as the power comes off, it yours to the left. When the power goes on, it yours to the right. Um, but there we go. Okay. Or I should say, or you're, you need left rudder now as we power off. And there we go. So keep trimming back for a little bit. It's giving us the gear warning. Gear. RPM is now dropping. The airplane can no longer maintain the RPM. And there's a stall warner. If I keep holding the nose up, expecting a relatively benign stall. There we go. Gear. That's full up elevator and the airplane is just mushing down. A little bit unstable left and right. About what you'd expect. Very nice. Just gently washing down. These airplanes are designed to have very nice stall characteristics. It is sensitive though. I wouldn't want to push too much uh, an airplane like this. There you go. So I've done right aileron, uh, left aileron, and it just, it's a little bit tempted just to get into a spiral dive there so let's recover so nose down wings level get the power on now it's confusing there because you can hear the propellers spin up so that's a slightly misleading cue you haven't actually got the power on that's just the propellers managing to get the airflow to spin up so yeah those sounds 
coming to life there, bringing this airplane into its, uh, I've got to say, a really nice level of, uh, of believability. Good, let's go join the circuit at High Wycombe and land there. I'm going to turn off those flight directors there all over the place. <laughs> stay at 2,000 feet and should be in front of us now again you can cover so much ground so quickly with this machine it's a little bit uh, misleading it's, it's, you, you can suddenly find yourself over where you're aiming for there's EGTB there uh, and yeah we'll be there in no time ok arriving in the circuit now doing a trademark <laughs> dodgy sort of crosswind join Let's have a look at the approach checklist. Landing data received, altimeters are set, nav set, parking brake is indeed off. Let's get this power back. Check. Quite high. Uh, fuel selectors on, they are on, the guards are closed. Fuel pumps are on from our stalling exercise. Fuel transfer off, lights, let's get that landing light on. That's the approach. Next is the final landing gear, uh, sorry, flaps down, landing gear three green. So, hear those rpms go up as we go to idle as it tries to give us more drag it's quite interesting yeah we're gonna land there on runway two uh no we're gonna land on the other runway <laughs> so let's do a sort of left hand circuit for that Check right this is an appalling circuit this is not how you would fly a circuit like this remember i don't fly general aviation <laughs> what is amazing to me is the way the aircraft constantly is managing the power for us it's moving RPM back and forward as we airspeed increases and decreases. Anyway, let's keep the speed back here. Now let's get the first bit of flap out. We're going to land full flap today. Head downwind. So brakes are off. Let's put the undercarriage down. Mixtures we don't have. And propellers also we don't have. That's all controlled by the airplane. Uh, fuel is on. We've got plenty. Flaps. We're going to go full in a minute. Uh, instruments are set. Car people don't have. Hatches and harnesses are secure. There we go. Don't want to get any lower though. Shadow out that little ascent. Bit of terrain around here. Definitely not an ascent. <laughs> Definitely busting some noise. In these airports, you, you have lots of restrictions because of uh, all these little houses you're flying over. I bet they don't like it. Okay, let's start slowing down now. Again, here that RPM shoot up as it is dragging. Full flat, power back. Getting the trim in. Pretty basic, so the two system happies there. So there we go. And drifting the power back into the flare. There's touchdown. We get the nose quite high. It's quite a high uh, nose gear strut. And we're down on the ground. Awesome. As you can tell, I've been really enjoying my time with this uh, this airplane. I think it's it's really quite uh, quite enjoyable. And like I say, a very good foray into uh, general aviation if you're used to modern complex airliners, uh, as I know a lot of people are in uh, in Microsoft Flight Sim especially people who have been viewing my channel, I would imagine.
Well, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. This has been good fun for me. Great to bring you another general aviation airplane and to enjoy Microsoft Flight Simulator a little bit lower and a little bit slower than we do normally. Although certainly this is not the uh, slowest we've been uh, as this is, like I say, a very quick general aviation airplane. Overall, I think uh, cows have done a really good job with it. I like the visual model, although, as I say, I would prefer a little more even wear and tear than we've got. But I think they've done a nice job regardless of that, uh, as these airplanes are often a bit shinier than the ones I am used to flying <laughs> and learning on. I also think the sounds are just really super. You can constantly get a sense of what the engines are doing. Remember, a twin engine piston airplane like this is uh, very loud. They are big engines. They're right next to you. You hear a lot of this stuff uh, and you, you get a real sense of the movement of the engines and the propeller blades through that noise and you get that in this add-on. I really like it. I think as well the handling is super. They've done a great job with that. It flies really nicely. The stalling's fun. The taxiing and the takeoff and the yaw is really well done, especially that ground handling. And the stalling was, was like I say, uh, pretty manageable in flight. The asymmetric flying was particularly a treat gave you that real sense of, of difficulty but not frustration as you try to fly this around on one engine it's certainly doable and like i say that this is a common airplane for single engine training oh, sorry not single engine multi-engine training but flying on one engine one engine and operative flying that's all then if you'd like to see more videos like this or live streams do please subscribe to the channel we'll have more content to do with aircraft microsoft flight simulator and tutorials on the aircraft i fly in the real world the boeing 787 that's all for now thank you so much for watching Bye bye